Okay, part two. Again, this in response to a gentleman's question saying he had injured his tendon pulley, so a long tendon and the flexors of the hand and forearm, really. Um, he had, had a recent injury to that, and what does he do? Uh, part one, we talked about some suggestions for the acute treatment being right now. Uh, part two is going to focus on generally, globally, how our body works a little bit. Uh, and if you are watching this video and you do not have a traumatic injury um, from sport or anything else and you want to learn how to avoid that, uh, hopefully this will be helpful for you as well, as well for this gentleman. Less right now and more in the future um, as this injury heals itself and certainly for the rest of his body right now. Um, so we're going to have a few uh, principles here and one is that let's take a brief tour of the musculoskeletal system, um, which is what we're dealing with, the work that I do deals with, about balancing the musculoskeletal system. Um, and one thing before I even say that is, of course, we are unimaginably complex organisms with very intertwined and interrelated systems. So we can say we're talking about something like the muscles or the fascia or the tendons or the nerves or the vascular network, and we're really talking about it all because it's so enmeshed. So that said, if we can do the very human thing of compartmentalizing the musculoskeletal system. Um, the one important difference I'd like to highlight, you can feel if you grab your upper arm and sink in about that far and strum back and forth and you're feeling, this is probably the most commonly used muscle for these types of demonstrations, right? Biceps brachii. Um, there's actually a pretty big muscle underneath that too. You can really get a sense of the muscle fibers, the muscle belly. If you pull your arm up, you can feel it contract. If you slowly lower it, you can feel those same fibers contracting as they elongate also. Um, to get a difference between this and connective tissue, let's move down to the inside of the elbow. So we have this inside point right here. My elbow proper is here. There's this inside point, and just inside that, you can strum. And this muscle group comes down and connects right here as well. And blends fascially into the forearm flexors of the hand. You can feel right there and feel the qualitative difference between this and this. This is more heavily uh, muscle tissue, almost entirely, actually at this stage of the game, and this is much more on the end of connective tissue. If you could guess which one is more hydrated, um, which one is going to repair faster, what would you guess? And probably, I know I can't hear your answer, but um, it's this one. Even if you guess this one, you can join me now. Um, in general, muscle tissue heals very, very quickly, uh, certainly relative to connective tissue. The interplay between the two is connective tissue can withstand generally higher loads than muscle tissue, and is really useful in our structure and in this long, beautiful pulley system that goes down into the hand. The musculature mostly up here, and the tendinous tissue mostly here. This receives huge, huge loads when you're doing something like climbing. Um, and so what happened is that one of the tendon pulleys coming up, I don't know which finger it was, um, but got pulled. So one thing to appreciate about all this is that connective tissue in general is going to have a much longer healing cycle. Um, if it's set up well, it will also be stronger for it. Um, but it's going to take longer to heal. So appreciate that as you're going through this healing process. Um, and I'd like to use that as a premise to talk about the muscles and connective tissue in general, we could call the soft tissues of the body. Um, and we're going to look at the difference between the forearm flexors and the extensors. So the extensors open the hand and raise the wrist. The flexors close the hand and curl the wrist this way. If you think about something like climbing, you could actually take that same concept up to the shoulder. Right? We're doing a lot of this motion, right? squeezing, pulling, inwardly rotating. Um, there's obviously a rock here, so we don't complete the motion, but this is where we're pulling, and not much this. What tends to happen is this whole group, we could call this just the flexor group, tends to get overdeveloped and short. The extensor group, open this way, right, um, tends to get long by, by proxy of being on the other side of the flexor group, and it also tends to be weak unless we're doing more opening up kinds of exercises and stretching this shorter group. So again, I, this isn't really a training program per se, but more a protocol for how you can look at 
um, your training. If you're doing a lot of this, which you are if you're a climber and you don't have any other major sport, which is more opening, um, including but not limited to, I don't know, I imagine rowing would be okay, but um, I'm thinking about stretching like yoga or Pilates or these more lengthening through the front side of us, um, that would definitely be a great thing to look into. At a local level of the hand, uh, you can do an exercise where you wrap a rubber band around your fingers and slowly open. You can grab onto a weight. This is a coaster, <laughs> but if it was a weight, um, curling up this way and slowly lowering with control the whole time. Doing high reps of those exercises to open up, or sorry, to strengthen this extensor side as well as stretching this flexor group, if I was against a wall, I could open up this way. Um, the combination of those two things can be really, really helpful for tissue balance. Uh, and the last thing, uh, parting thought really, is that we can talk about something like, oh, the flexors of the hand, you know, the hand is here and the shoulder is here, and um, we can talk about ourselves like we're parts. Actually, just a couple blogs ago wrote, you can look on my website, which you may be on now, uh, called Why Car Analogies Are Bogus. Um, I'm smiling because I like that one. And um, it talks about how we can talk ab about ourselves in these parts and that that's not how we work. An example of that is to raise my arm. Actually, the first muscle that fires, if you haven't heard this before and you want to take a guess, uh, let's take a guess, it's not the brain, it's not a trick question, um, isn't the shoulder, though that is of course a big player. Um, not even the core, but our very, very deep core of the a plantar flexor of the foot. So in our deep, you can't really see my leg, but a deep calf muscle as the first of fires. And that speaks to our stabilization and working as a system of a whole. That is to say that a traumatic injury here in an area that was already prone, already heading towards that imbalance, um, in some ways you could look at the move that went twit as sort of the, the straw, straw that broke the camel's back. Can be, right? And maybe not, maybe you have a perfectly balanced system, and, um, but chances of you being predisposed, right, towards like pulling here and not here, uh, are pretty good. So appreciating that our whole system is working together and how something like, though it may seem a little abstract, um, an imbalance in the leg or the hip or the knee, right, can even lead you towards uh, more predisposition towards injury in the hand, even though they're so very far apart. Functionally, we work very much as something in concert and not as a, not as a series of little pieces uh, that, are, that are assembled in the arms, doing the arm thing and the legs doing the leg thing. Um, and so the last bit that I'll leave this video on, if you've made it this far, I applaud you. And uh, if you're interested in learning out more, please send me an email. Uh, there's links on the side of this website, but it's bodywork at liambowler.com, L-I-A-M-B-O-W-L-E-R. Uh, you can send me an email if you have any questions, and working towards this kind of balance uh, with my clients and allowing them the not only freedom of um, motion, but moving out of patterns that are stuck, stuck any one way or another, and more towards an ease um, in finding your own center line. So, of course, to the gentleman who wrote the email, who actually know quite well, but as you know, uh, I'd be happy to work with you more on this if you ever come back from Germany, <laughs> which is why I'm not answering this question in person, but sending it across the airwaves. Um, again, bodywork at liambowler.com if you have any questions. Be well. <laughs>